Hi guys, it's Shannon with some bookish musings. I am going to try to do my first book review on YouTube. And it's terrifying. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about you. Not you, but you by Caroline Kepnes. One of the best books I have ever read. Seriously, um, I can't think of a single bad thing to say about this book. I loved it. From the very first sentence to the very last sentence and everything in between, I love, love, love the narrator's voice. And to me, that's the most important part of a book or of any writing. Um, I don't care as much what the plot is as I do the way the writer tells the story, the words that they choose, the voice that they use. That's what really draws me in, and this book is brilliant in that way. Um, it's told from the perspective of a serial killer. And yes, the Dexter books are like that too, and there are comparisons, certainly. But um, the difference is, with Dexter, he has an innate need to kill. And he deals with that by learning to only kill people that he thinks deserve it. People that would be um, up for capital punishment if they got caught. People who are rapists and murderers and child molesters. And he vets them very carefully before he kills them to satisfy that need in him without hurting innocent people. And that's a brilliant concept in itself. But you is told from the perspective of Joel Goldberg. And his, his reasons for killing are a little bit different. Um, it's not an innate need to kill like it is with Dexter. Instead, it's born out of his desperate need for acceptance and for love and unconditional love in particular. And he will do anything to, to find that one special person who will love him no matter what. And he's got the classic black and, black and white thinking that you see in borderline personality disorder. Although it's funny that that um, diagnosis is given actually to Beck in the novel and not to Joe. And in fact, um, I think most people consider Joe to be just a psychopath. To me, he reads more like he's got borderline personality disorder, but maybe with some narcissistic personality disorder thrown in and, and some other things, because of course most people with borderline don't murder. But he puts people on this pedestal, so he meets Beck. And right away, he, he is entranced by her, obsessed with her, has to have her from the first moment he sees her. And that's all well and good, except that he manipulates her and everyone in her life in order to make her fall in love with him. And then when he finds out that she's not perfect and she's not deserving of being on that pedestal, then he turns immediately and instead of thinking she's the best thing ever, it's she's got to go. And um, he does this with other people who get in his way. So there's a narcissistic thing there where, well, you're not serving my purpose, so I need to get rid of you. Or you're coming between me and Beck, so I need to get rid of you. Um, and then with Beck, it's that, that black and white thinking that you you see so typically in borderline personality disorder. So I'm, I'm just wondering if other people have um, come to that conclusion or am I the only one who diagnoses him that way and not that I'm qualified to diagnose him, but um, to me, that's the character. And I can really relate to that, um, to his, his need and his desperation to find that unconditional love that he never had as a child. And it's very sad. It makes you feel sorry for him and it, it makes you care about him even though he is a serial killer. And 
you can kind of understand the way his mind is working because the whole book is his thoughts. The whole thing is his thoughts on everything and everyone and, and every circumstance. And it really draws you in. And that's the kind of writing I really like when you're inside the character's head. So I want to start, I just want to read the very first paragraph. <clears throat> You walk into the bookstore and you keep your hand on the door to make sure it doesn't slam. You smile, embarrassed to be a nice girl, and your nails are bare and your v-neck sweater is beige and it's impossible to know if you're wearing a bra, but I don't think that you are. You're so clean that you're dirty and you murmur your first word to me, hello, when most people would just pass by, but not you in your loose pink jeans and pink spun from Charlotte's web and where did you come from? There's some run-on sentences in there that I really, really love because that's how we think. That's that's the natural way that our minds work is just one thing after another and one thought leads to another. And we don't think in these perfect sentences. We think in run-ons and associations. And um, right away, you're just drawn right in to Joe and, and his thought process and the spiraling of his mind, how he's just immediately obsessed with this girl and you get a sense right away that, okay, like he's, it's a little much, right? She just walked in the door and said hello, and already he's like head over heels. And it's not just because of how she looks, but it's because she spoke to him and she gave him the time of day when most people wouldn't. Um, and I, I find that desperation is endearing um, because he's not evil. He's not like just out to be a bad guy and kill people. He's... He's searching for something, and um, he'll do whatever he has to do to get it. So it, anyway, it's an interesting ride, but what's most interesting, well, a couple of things. One, the premise that he has learned to stalk this girl through social media, so all of her online accounts, he's going in, and, and people, that's what they do these days, especially people in their 20s, seem to just put everything out there online on Facebook and Twitter and whatever and anybody can see it and um, you know it's not that hard to track somebody down if you really want to these days and so that's what Joe does and he finds out where she lives and he spies on her through the window and it doesn't help she leaves the blinds open while she's doing things she should probably not be doing in front of an open window but he stalks her in, in the modern way. He goes online and he finds out everything he needs to know about her in order to just reel her into his web. And that one thing, speaking of webs, when he compares the pink of her jeans from Charlotte's web, he compares it to Charlotte's web, and I, I remember when I first read it thinking, wow, like that, that's just, such a cool description like who compares a pink to Charlotte's web like it was just I don't know and it, and it creates this image of a web in your mind and that's exactly what the book is is like this web of all these people that are connected somehow and Joe's relationships to each of them and how he deals with each of them based on whether or not that they play into what it is he wants and so I just I thought that was a great image um, I want to go see um, a couple other things here. His, I say his because it's Joe Goldberg's thoughts, but it's Caroline Kepnes who wrote it. The description of Ikea. I could relate to this so much. This is exactly what Ikea is. So here's how it's described in the book from Joe's perspective. It's a dystopian nightmare come true where all furniture is cut from the same hunk of cheap ass wood, where all rooms were furnished with items that came out of the exact same factory at the exact same time. It smells like body odor and Febreze and baby shit and farts and meatballs and nail polish and more baby shit. Doesn't anyone get a babysitter anymore? And it's loud, Beck, and I miss half the things you say because I can't hear you over the other humans. And I, I don't know, I just feel like that's a great description of Ikea. Like, there's so many people, and just all this furniture is like cookie cutter, and like, ugh, you know, like, why are we even here? 
why does this place exist? And you know, of course, a lot of people like it, but anyway, I just thought that was a great description. Um, and then there's this one sentence about halfway through the book that just hit me because it's so relatable. <clears throat> Whoever said running in the morning gives you energy never had a day job that involves customer service. Right? And I'll read one more here. <clears throat> what a shame to be so angered by what you don't have that you treat what you do have like it's nothing. And that's just one sentence, but it's, it's profound in that, isn't that what most of us do? You know, we complain about what we don't have and the things we do have. I mean, there are so many people in the world who could live off what, what we think isn't enough. And I don't know, it just sort of sums up the whole human existence in a way, uh, the human existence of the modern world. And you think back in the days when there was no plumbing and there was no electricity and there was no this and that and those people did just fine and here we are with you know everything and it's never enough so I just thought that was a great line um, there are a lot of great lines in here um, if any of that appeals to you I I think you'd like the writing I love Caroline Kepnes uh, this is the first thing I read by her and I was completely blown away. Like, honestly, I was like, where has she been all my life? Um, I recently finished the second book in the series, Hidden Bodies. Didn't like it as much, but I still really, really liked it. Um, but this, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. Um, I did have some notes I wanted to go through, but I don't know. I think I've already covered it all. Um, yeah. So that's basically what I wanted to say about it. Um, and also, I mean, I'm not going to go into the whole plot because most people by now know what it is. Um, but you can always look, look it up on Amazon. It'll give you the basic synopsis anyway or any other review online. Um, I also did a, a more in-depth review of it on my um, website if you want to check that out, shannonhubby.com. I'll put the link below. Um, but that that's basically what I wanted to say is just that I so much love the voice in this book. The, the narrator's voice is just, I don't know, I've never read, read anything like it. And I have read one of the Dexter books. And like I said, there, there are comparisons in the characters, but not in the voice. They're completely different. Um, the two writing styles, Jeff Lindsay's writing is completely different from Caroline Kepnes. And... Um, I don't know, this is just, it's just such a good book. And if you've watched the Netflix series, it's almost as good as the book. Like, it's really good. Um, I saw the series before I read the book. I didn't even know it was a book. And I saw the series on Netflix. And I remember this one scene in particular. I don't know if it's the first episode or one of the first episodes. And Joe has found where Beck lives and he's behind a bush across the street and he's, you know, doing something that guys do while watching girls. And he's watching her through the window and I remember being like, what did I just see? Like, was that, sir, that was that on TV? Like, what did I just see? Like, and it was like, whoa. <laughs> And the book is like that. The series is like that. The book is like that. It's like, whoa, like... Uh, I don't know. It's it's just really, um, really, really good. Really, really good if you like that kind of creepy thing. And it is very creepy. I mean, I'm not creeped out easily. And so for me, I wasn't really creeped out. But for people who are more normal, um, it's a creepy concept that this guy that you just meet at a bookstore, he's, you know, working at the bookstore and all of a sudden he's like watching you through your window and you know, getting off, uh, and you have no idea. And then he's like showing up everywhere. And I mean, I'm not going to say too much for those who haven't read it, but yeah, it's pretty creepy to think that that could happen. And what makes it more creepy is how believable it is that that could happen. It really could happen because people put everything out there these days online. And 
I don't know. It's almost like this is like a, it's a warning. It's like, hmm, you know, think about what you're doing because there are guys like Joe Goldberg out there. Like people like that do exist and have always existed. And um, the internet has not always existed. And it certainly doesn't make us any safer, does it? And so that's what makes this so creepy. But the writing is what makes it so good. Like it's just, I just loved every word and I didn't want it to end um, and other than that uh, I think that's about all I'm gonna say because there are a lot of reviews out there about this book and um, there's not a whole lot more to say that hasn't been said I just wanted to join in the conversation and maybe ask other people um, what do you think about Joe and do you think he could be borderline and do you think Caroline Kepnes had that in mind when she wrote him? Or was he meant to just be a straight up psychopath? Or, you know, what What are your thoughts? Because to me, like I said, he reads to be very, very much um, a person with borderline personality disorder. So I'm curious what people think of that. And also, if you've read the book, what, what else did you think of it? Like, um, and, and the series, did you like the series? Did you like it more? Did you like it not as much? To me, the series was fantastic. Um, the first season in particular, the second season I didn't like as much. The first season, one of my favorite shows. Like, I just loved it. And then I read the book and one of my favorite books. Like, it's just incredibly insightful and funny and dark, but funny. Like, he's really funny. Caroline Kepnes is funny and Joe Goldberg is funny and it's a dark humor which is what I really like and um, so it, I don't know if you're into that kind of thing and you haven't read it pick it up um, it's a fabulous book and let me know what you think and I'll see you guys later bye